Hi, John McElroy here, talking all things automotive. And today's topic is scar tissue in automotive design. You never heard of that term before? That's okay. It was a new one on me too. And I'll define it in a moment, but first some background. As I've talked about before in these video series, some traditional automakers are modifying their ICE platforms to create BEVs, while others are going with a clean sheet design for a dedicated BEV platform. I personally think that a clean sheet design is better for BEVs, and I believe that ultimately everyone's going to have to go that way, but there are pros and cons to both approaches. The reason why automakers want to use existing ICE platforms to make a BEV is that they can save a ton of time and money. They can reuse so much of what they've already got, both in components and manufacturing facilities. It also gives them a bit of a hedge. Even though sales of electric cars are soaring, the sales numbers are still fairly small, about 4% of the market in the U.S., though more than double than that in Europe and China. And there's a lot of skepticism, at least amongst some automakers, like BMW and Toyota, as to how much or how fast the market will really go electric. So by taking a nice platform and modifying it to make electric cars, they can reduce their risk and their investment until sales of BEVs really ramp up later this decade. That sounds like a really smart strategy until you start diving into the details. The disadvantage of using an ICE platform is that it carries a lot of what the engineers call scar tissue. In other words, a platform that has to be able to use a piston powertrain or an electric one ends up with a lot of compromises. It has to be designed to accommodate a gas tank in the rear or a battery pack in the floor. It has to have room for a radiator up front or hopefully make room for a frunk. It has to have a location for an eight-speed automatic transmission or a smaller spot for a two-speed gear reduction unit and so on and so forth. Designing a platform to be able to accommodate two different kinds of propulsion systems means you end up with a heavier vehicle and that extra weight is what the engineers call scar tissue. I think a great example of the pros and cons is a comparison of Tesla's Model 3 versus the BMW i4 electric. The Model 3, as you know, is built on a clean sheet, dedicated BEV platform. The i4 is built on a modified version of the ICE platform for the BMW 4 series. But the i4 and the Model 3 are actually very close in size. And for this size comparison, I'm using what they call a car's footprint. That's where you take the wheelbase, which is the distance between the front and rear wheels, and multiply that by a vehicle's track, which is the distance between the left side wheels and the right side wheels. And since the front track is usually a little different from the rear track, you just figure out the average between the two. So, the i4 has a wheelbase of 112.4 inches. The Model 3 is at 113.2. The i4 has a track that's an average of 62.9 inches. The Model 3 is 62.2. Like I said, very close. Multiply those numbers for each car, and the i4 has a footprint of 7,069 square inches, while the Tesla is 7,041. Again, very close, almost the same size. But this is where the comparison gets really interesting. The i4 has a curb weight of 4,680 pounds, while the Tesla weighs in at 3,648, which means the Tesla is over 1,000 pounds lighter. What's even more amazing is that the Model 3 is actually slightly lighter than the ICE version of the 4 Series. I'm using the BMW 430i Grand Coupe with an automatic transmission to make this comparison. So the next time you hear someone complain about how much heavier an EV is because of all that battery weight, you might want to point out to them that a Model 3 with its battery pack is actually lighter than a 4 Series BMW with a 2-liter turbo. And who would have ever thunk that? One reason why the i4 is so much heavier is that it's got a significantly bigger battery, 83.9 kilowatt hours versus only 50 kilowatt hours in the base rear drive Model 3. I'd estimate 
that the BMW's bigger battery pack is somewhere around 370 pounds heavier than Tesla's, and I'd also estimate that extra battery capacity adds over $4,000 cost to the i4. Yet, for all that extra battery, the i4 only delivers 29 more miles of range. And all this difference in weight and battery size is reflected in the price of each car. A base Model 3 costs around $47,000. A base i4 is over $55,000. You see, the only way that BMW can get the kind of profit margins it needs with its ICE-based i4 is by charging $8,000 more. And that really shows you the drawback of going with an ICE-based platform that carries a lot of scar tissue. BMW ended up with a significantly heavier, much more expensive design that doesn't deliver much more range. We'll see how it sells, but these numbers tell you that BMW doesn't stand a chance of taking on Tesla. But this comparison between BMW and Tesla does not tell the full story of ICE-based BEVs compared to clean sheet BEVs. Not all the startups are as weight efficient as Tesla. So let's compare the Rivian R1T, which is a clean sheet design, to Ford's F-150 Lightning, which is built on a modified ICE platform. And for comparison purposes, let's go with the big battery in the Lightning, 131 kilowatt hours, which is almost the same size as the one in the Rivian at 135. The footprint of the Lightning is 9,923 square inches, while the Rivian is 9,139. So, the Lightning is 8% bigger, but it's lighter. It weighs 6,590 pounds, while the Rivian weighs in at 7,148. That is a 558 pound difference. The Rivian has four electric motors versus two in the Ford, and that probably accounts for a lot of the weight difference. And the Rivian can tow more, 11,000 pounds versus 7,700. But they both have about the same driving range, around 320 miles. So that shows that Ford was able to come up with a competitive weight package with an ICE platform compared to Rivian's clean sheet design. Ford's also working on a clean sheet design for the next generation Lightning, which will not come out until 2025. But if I were Rivian, I'd be worried. If Ford can beat Rivian on weight and match it on range with a modified ICE platform, imagine what Ford can do with a clean sheet BEV platform. And going with an ICE platform helped Ford beat the Cybertruck and the Chevrolet Silverado EV to the market by at least a year. Even so, I can't wait to see the specs on Tesla Cybertruck or GM Silverado EV. They should be pretty impressive. So there you've got it. Ice BEVs versus BEV BEVs. We're still in the early days of the transition to an electric future, so that's why we're seeing some automakers modify their ICE platforms to make electric vehicles, to save time and money. But you watch, that is a short-term solution. In the long run, a clean sheet BEV platform, done right, will always be superior to an ICE-based BEV. And it's all got to do with getting rid of that scar tissue. Hope you like these videos, and if you do, please make sure to subscribe to our channel.